conservation of momentum. We've seen from our previous work that impulse causes a change in momentum. J equals delta P. Now the delta P here comes from the fact that the tennis ball wasn't moving initially, but after the impulse of the tennis racket hitting it, the momentum of the tennis ball has changed and now has positive momentum, P1. So that impulse of the tennis racket hitting the ball gave the tennis ball momentum. We also had the idea of Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The action of the tennis racket hitting the ball that changed the tennis racket's momentum, and it also changed the tennis ball's momentum. So the tennis racket slowed down, and the tennis ball picked up speed. So that was the action and reaction. Well, that led to another idea here. This is the Greek letter sigma. It stands for a sum of, uh, in this case, the sum of the momentum initially. So this means the sum of the initial momentum of the system. Well, let's look at our system. We have two objects in our system. We have the tennis racket and we have the tennis ball. So the tennis racket had momentum coming in, but the tennis ball didn't have momentum. So the total or the sum of the momentum initially was a tennis racket only. And what we find out is afterwards, the tennis racket is slowed down and the tennis ball has picked up speed. So if we add up the momentum of both of those objects after the collision, we take the sum of the, the final momentum of the tennis racket and the final momentum of the tennis ball, and we add those together, we find out that they are equal. And that is the law of conservation of momentum. Another way to state the law of conservation of momentum is to say that the sum of the momentum in a closed and isolated system will remain constant. And in words here, the sum of the momenta in a closed and isolated system remains constant. So it doesn't matter when you add it up, it'll always be the same. So let's talk about what a system is and what closed and isolated systems are. A system is any collection of objects that you're happening to observe. So in our case, it was a tennis racket and a tennis ball. So we had two objects in our system. A closed system means that uh, it doesn't gain or lose mass. In other words, our two objects, the tennis racket and tennis ball, have the same mass throughout our observation and we don't have uh, parts of the tennis uh, ball flying off or parts of the tennis racket flying off. An isolated system means that there are no forces interacting with the outside world. So we don't have a strong wind influencing the tennis ball or the tennis racket or something like that uh, in our particular case and therefore our system is isolated. So this is our formal definition of conservation of momentum. Conservation momentum is a great tool for studying interactions, especially interactions where they don't last very long, when the during part is pretty quick. And uh, maybe we know what happened afterwards. We don't really know what happened during, but because we know what happened afterwards, we could go back and predict what happened beforehand. For example, car crashes. We know in car crashes what happened afterward, but often people don't want to tell that they were speeding or going through an intersection when they shouldn't have been and so forth. But the afterwards with conservation momentum can tell us a lot about what happened beforehand because the total momentum uh, in both cases should be equal. We're going to take a look at several examples of uh, this before, during, and after. So let's take a look at our first type of interaction here that happens abruptly, and that is an explosion. Boom. Well, we're going to have an explosion between these two carts. They're going to push off of each other because we have these two springs that are going to be released and push off of each other. So we're going to use conservation momentum to analyze this interaction. We're going to take the sum of the momenta of both of the carts beforehand, and we're going to see if that they're equal to the sum of the momenta of the two carts afterwards. So taking a look at this, the first case is pretty easy because since they're at rest here, the carts have not exploded yet, that's the before, 
uh, there's no velocity and therefore there is no momenta. So both carts, momentum is zero and therefore the initial momentum of the system is zero. They're just sitting here. Um, that's kind of boring, but it's not going to be boring long because next, boom, the during, these two carts will push off of each other with an equal and opposite impulse. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So that's impulses pushing off of each other at equal intervals of time and equal forces. And that's an explosion. There's internal energy creating outward motion. And that's what an explosion is. So these two carts push off of each other with equal opposite impulses. And when they do, since they have equal mass, they're both one kilogram carts. Since they have equal masses, they're going to move away from each other with equal velocities. The cart going to the right is going to have an a velocity, let's say, of two meters per second going to the right, and the cart going to the left is going to have a velocity of negative two meters per second. And since they have equal masses, we can find the final momenta of the system by taking the momentum of cart one after the interaction. So that's mass one of one kilogram times a velocity of negative two meters per second. And then we can take the momentum of cart two, its mass of one kilogram times a velocity of two meters per second. And that's a positive two kilograms meters per second. Since these are equal and opposite, when we add them together, the total momenta is equal to zero. And hey, look at that. Afterwards, the momenta afterwards is equal to mo the momenta before. And conservation of momentum predicted that. So we're going to copy all these notes down, and then we're going to take a look at this exact model with a simulation. So let's take a look at a, a simulation of our explosion. Both carts are set up, ready to explode apart. Their initial momenta is zero, since they um, are both just at rest here. So afterwards, their final momenta should be equal to zero. They each have a mass of one kilogram, so let's see what happens here. Boom, and they both exploded away from each other. And when they did, they both went away with equal and opposite velocities because because they had equal and opposite momenta. One times 10 is 10 kilograms meters per second, and one times negative 10 is negative 10 kilograms meters per second. So 10 plus a negative 10 is equal to zero. So their final momenta is also equal to zero. Let's have a little bit of fun here, and let's uh, change the mass. Let's change the mass of, uh, let's reset, and change the mass of uh, cart uh, one here to two kilograms and let's see what happens differently here. Again the initial momentum is zero here, the initial momenta added together zero plus zero is zero. We're gonna start and see what happens afterwards. Notice afterwards that this cart, cart uh, one here is going twice as fast, or cart two is going twice as fast as cart one. But wait, let's calculate the momenta. 1, mass times velocity, times 10. 1 times 10 is 10 going to the right. And 2 times a negative 5, because it's going to the left, 2 times a negative 5 is negative 10. Hey, 10 plus a negative 10 is still equal to 0. And conservation momentum works. The sum of the momenta before is equal to the sum of the momenta after. Let's take a look at this one last time, but let's flip things around now. So cart two is more massive than cart one and uh, see that it doesn't matter uh, which one is more massive. Uh, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction works either way. And boom! And as you can see now cart uh, two is going five meters per second because five times two is ten in the positive direction and cart one is one times negative ten which is negative ten going the other way as far as momentum. So 10 plus a negative 10 is equal to zero, and the before is equal to the after, and conservation momentum works. So as you just saw for explosions, conservation of momentum uh, predicted what would happen. The initial momentum of the system was equal to the final momentum of the system, 
and even though the during was very abrupt. Well, that's conservation momentum. We have other types of interactions we want to look at, specifically collisions, but we'll do those in another video. And Scratch's parting thought. And good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.